All right, today's last story we're going to talk about is uh, the the initial Royal Rumble odds have been released, and this is always fun when this happens, especially with the Royal Rumble. We've we've done this for the last three or four premium live events, and the odds are always all over the place. I don't know. I don't even know. To me, it's weird. How do you judge? odds of something that is scripted right it's like it's like placing odds on how a movie ends there are people within wwe who know this information they have this information they know who is going to win the men's and women's royal rumble yet we get given odds and there's actual websites where you can place bets on who you think is going to win the royal rumble but here it is this is the first round of odds. These will change, I guarantee you, as more information trickles out and more uh, as we get closer to the the actual date. But here it is: Men's Royal Rumble odds. Uh, let's let's work backwards. The number five at plus fourteen hundred is Austin Theory. That's a that's a long shot. I don't I don't see any path that Austin Theory wins a, an opportunity at another title shot after they just kind of stripped him of the, the money in the bank belt. I understand that they're building back better with uh, Austin Theory, but I, Royal Rumble, that's a, that's a far long shot. Number four, we've got Seth Rollins at plus 1,200. Seth Sneaky, man, he can always win. He can always win. And if they just want to go with a sure shot and they want to put Seth in a, in a title match at WrestleMania, he's a sure thing. It's plus 1,200, that's a bet I would take. It's a bet I would place some money on at plus 1,200. Number three at plus 400, The Rock. So this is interesting. This isn't, I would have thought The Rock was going to be one or two. With The Rock being number three, I think you have to read into this because these odds makers typically have a little bit of an inside track on information. And if they're placing The Rock at plus 400 and third on this list, I think that means that The Rock's probably not at the Royal Rumble. Because there's no, right? Because this is essentially the odds of The Rock being at the Royal Rumble. The Rock doesn't show up and wrestle in the Royal Rumble and not win. That just doesn't happen. So so The Rock's sliding down this list because I remember people saying that he was the sure favorite to win the Royal Rumble. Now moving down to three means that I don't expect to see Dwayne at the Royal Rumble. Because he's now he's behind number two, which is Sami Zayn. This is, this is who should win the Royal Rumble, guys. Sami Zayn, if you want the most entertaining WrestleMania ever, Sami Zayn is the guy who should win the Royal Rumble. He's not going to because, number one, at plus 100, Cody Rhodes is winning the Royal Rumble. I, I mean, I just feel that in my gut. I don't know. It, it's just, it just feels like it has to happen. And if it's not Cody, I, who is it? Who is it? It should be Sami but I don't think there's any chance in the world that they do a WrestleMania main event of Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. I just don't think, I think they did their Kofi mania and I don't think Triple H just sold on the idea of, of Sammy being the guy to knock off Roman Reigns or even be in that match. So I best, your best bet there is Seth Rollins at plus 1200 because if it's not Cody, it could be Seth. I could see Seth winning. I, I really could. Uh, the women's Royal Rumble match. Uh, let's work backwards here. Number five, Raquel Rodriguez at plus 800. I'm going to tell you something interesting about this. The The odds are a lot tighter on the women's side than they are on the men's side. There's, there's the, From one to five, there's not, the, you know, plus 1,400 to plus 100. That's a big gap on the men's side. But on the women's side, you go from plus 800 to plus 250 means we don't know. We have no clue who's about to win this match. But number five, they have Raquel Rodriguez at plus 800. Number four, they have Bailey at plus 500. Number three, they have Charlotte at plus 400. Number two, they have Rhea Ripley at plus 350. And number one, they have Becky Lynch at plus 250. I I don't want to see Becky Lynch. I love Becky Lynch. I don't want to see her win the Royal Rumble. I don't. We got to quit using the Royal Rumble to elevate established stars the way they keep doing this is Rhea Ripley's rumble or or long shot this is Raquel Rodriguez's rumble but this should not be it should not be Becky Lynch it should not be Charlotte and it should not be Bailey it just shouldn't 
It really, I mean, really, if, if there's only one person who should win this, and that's Rhea Ripley, and she should be headed on a collision course with Bianca Belair for a title match at WrestleMania. I've been calling this for the last ooh, three months. I've been saying that this is the path they need to take, that we don't need Bianca and Charlotte. What we need is Bianca and Rhea Ripley and start the new era. That, that's what I believe we need. I, I don't think, I, I don't see anything else otherwise. Uh, so that, that's the odds. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be doing another, uh, ringside recap. And we got AEW dynamite tonight. Let's see if they can put together two hours tonight. Let's see if they, let's see if they can get their champion on the show tonight. Let's see if they can get their tag team champions on the show tonight and not save those guys for the uh, almighty Friday night rampage. But uh, that is all the time we have today, guys. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of the Casual Wrestling Daily Podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's show and learned something new. If you have any suggestions or thoughts for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out and drop those in the comments section. And don't forget to join us tomorrow, same place, same time, for more wrestling talk. Until then, as the great Mick Foley once said, have a nice day. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.